circuit here for the, uh, the next bit of the um, uh, video and what I'm going to do now is to show how we use a reservoir capacitor and this is um, a sort of fairly small 1000 microfarad uh, capacitor and I'm going to fit that across the load resistor to act as a reservoir again pretty much like it shows in the textbook and um, it's not an ideal capacitor this but it'll do for the purposes of our demonstration and uh, if we clip the capacitor across the load you should see the smooth in action straight away um, you've got to make sure that that capacitor is the right way across the load resistor otherwise it'll explode and uh, I can confirm it is the right way around um, and uh, what we see now is a, a pretty smooth um, circuit uh, uh, waveform uh, sitting at the about the 20 odd 30 volt sort of level now it looks quite smooth but if we change the display slightly so that we can zoom in on the uh, the waveform by increasing the the Y amplifier uh, we're actually seeing now sort of millivolts per division and you can see there that whilst it looked quite smooth initially that line is actually quite jagged albeit the uh, I'm now down at 20 millivolts per division so there's a there's a sort of 40 millivolt difference on that 30 volt signal so it isn't exactly uh, smooth, um, it only looks smooth when we compare it with the the previous one. So we go back to the 2 volts per division, um, that's not a huge amount, but if we slot increase it you can see it looks quite quite horrendous. Um, so we couldn't really use that like that, but it does join up the dots quite well. Again if we take the capacitor away you can see there that the, the waveform is actually quite spiky back to where we were originally. Um, so the reservoir capacitor is doing its job joining up the, the peak so as it charges up the capacitor holds its charge and drops it a little bit and charges it up but we can only see that when we zoomed in on the on the waveform. Let's see the same effect on the, the full wave rectifier now. Okay same routine again We've got the full wave rectifier in circuit this time, and uh, we can see the again the classic waveform. Take the same capacitor, um, and this time it's not going to have to do quite as much joining up because instead of joining um, two peaks that are sort of half a wave apart, we've now only got the uh, the, the two uh, peaks which are um, much closer together. So the thing should charge and discharge that much quicker, and uh, by putting the capacitor again observing the correct polarity across the load resistor we get a very nice um, smoothing circuit. Let's zoom in on that thing again again I'm there, there onto that, that's 20 uh, millivolts per division it's not as um, bad as it was and the frequency of the, the, the peaks is obviously doubled, it's a 100 hertz ripple um, but at least it's, it's less than it was before um, but we'd still want to get that even better if we, before we're going to use it for our, uh, if we're running a radio or something like that. Perfectly okay like that, say to, um, to charge batteries or something, but uh, not not necessarily good enough to uh, to run a, a receiver or something like that. You've got quite a lot of hum over the top of the audio amplifier. Okay, here's the final circuit I want to show you. This is a, a more complete power supply. Um, it's almost complete. What we've got here is um, the bridge rectifier, which isn't four separate diodes. It's actually a bridge rectifier encased within some sort of compound. Um, but it's doing exactly the same job as the, the four diodes that we saw previously. A much larger reservoir capacitor. This one's actually uh, 4,700 microfarads. Uh, and this time we've added an IC regulator, an integrated circuit voltage regulator, um, which uh, hopefully will take that last bit of ripple out of the circuit. There's a couple of decoupling capacitors there just to uh, to stop the IC from oscillating and, and take out any last traces of ripple that might exist, feeding into, again, the load resistor which we're going to measure the uh, the thing across. So I'll just connect up the probe and we'll uh, we'll have a look at that. Okay, I've got the probe connected up now, and if we uh, power up the power supply, uh, you can see there instead of getting the 30 volts we were getting before, we're now down to um, uh, well, much less than 
20 volts that would be the, the 20 volt point so it's probably uh, not surprising it's a 12 volt regulator it's about 12 volts so if we increase the Y amplifier to so it's now showing one through the 10 times probe makes that 10 volts per division you can see now that it's above the 10 volts and showing just another couple of volts on top there so that's a 12 volt regulated supply and uh, if we alter this display now and see if we can zoom in on the ripple as we did before you can see there's absolutely no trace of that and I'm right down there it's as low as it's going to go now that's 5 millivolts uh, per centimeter and absolutely no trace of ripple at all so the, the voltage regulator is doing its job take dropping down the, the 30 volts to 12 volts and holding it there very very smooth and that's probably as good a circuit as you're going to get okay let's turn that one off and uh, that's just a, a quick recap really So, some summary notes for the oscilloscope. Um, screen with the graticule marks in centimetre squares and uh, a dot formed by a stream of electrons which we can move up and down or across the screen. Um, we've got a Y amplifier which allows us to determine how many volts are displayed uh, up and down on the amplitude of the signal and a time-based control which determines how fast we can move the spot across the screen and um, if we apply an alternating current it gives us both positive and negative signals if we start to move the spot across the screen we can see the waveform we can expand it to see as much or as little of the waveform as we we want to by adjusting the Y amplifier we can see how that looks more or less um, We've looked at the full wave and the half wave rectifiers and how we use smoothing capacitors and then finally at the uh, voltage regulating IC to give perfect smooth 12 volts. hope that's been useful and uh, good luck with your studies. 73s from G0FUW.